I'm Joe Stevenson, and today we're going to be looking at the J1939 library that is included in Codasys version 3.5 Service Pack 6. I'll be reviewing the use of both local and remote ECUs and how to transmit and receive data using them. After that, I'm going to log into the controller using Codasys, and we can look at how the controller will process the data as I send and receive CAN messages. I'm going to be using Codasys version 3.5 Service Pack 6 for this example. I'll create a new project for the 3XL controller. And once that project loads, I'll start by adding a J1939 manager to CAN1. So I'll go to Add Device field buses, J1939, and add the J1939 manager. Once I've done that, I can add an ECU to the manager by clicking Add Device and selecting J1939 ECU. This will act as the placeholder for an external J1939 device that will be communicating with our controller. Once you've added the J1939 manager, you can go to the library manager and see that the J1939 library was automatically added to the project. The library includes functions for diagnostic messaging, and here there's information for DTCs, and then the function blocks for receiving and transmitting DM messages. There are also manual functions for transmitting and receiving parameter groups, uh, PGNs and SPNs. So if I double click this to look at the device, we'll see the general tab includes something called a preferred address. This will be a source address setting uh, for this device. So for now, I'm going to set this one to one for my fictional J1939 device that I'll be pretending to read. And this local device checkbox, for now, we're going to leave it unchecked because if you check it, it tells the controller that you're going to be simulating a device in the controller. So I'm going to leave this unchecked because I want to use this to receive data from an actual external device. Here's the ECU name settings and we're going to leave this as default for now because we don't need to mess with that. But if you needed to set up the name for a, uh, a device you're using, this is how you would do it. There's also a communication watchdog here and we will not be using that in this example. If we move to the TX Signals tab, this is where we can add PGNs that we'll be receiving from this uh, device. So I'll click Add PG, and it'll bring up the window where we can select which PGNs that we're going to be dealing with. For now, I'm going to choose Electronic Brake Controller 1, EBC1. So I'll highlight this and click Add PG. So it's added to the TX Signals, and we can see all the SPNs that are included in this PGN. If we go to the J1939 IO mapping tab, we can see the PGN that we've selected. And then when we open it, we see all of the global variables that are created for the SPNs. So the arrow pointing into the box here indicates that these are all inputs, meaning that we can read these variables as incoming data to the controller. So let's go back to PLC PRG and we'll create a new PRG that we can use to handle our J1939 communication. So I'll right click application, add an object and select POU. I'll name this handle J1939. I'll leave it as a program and structured text. So first thing I'll do is I'll call this from my main program here, PLC PRG. So I'm going to come down past the initialization section, but above the ignition check. So right here, I'll call my handle J1939 program. Okay, let's compile by hitting F11 to make sure that everything is good. Okay, zero errors. Now we'll go back to handle J1939, and inside here, I can simply call uh, the variable for any SPN I want to look at. 
So I'll come over to J1939 ECU and say, I want to look at the brake switch. So it's EBS brake switch. So I'll go to handle J1939 and really just to view the status of that variable or the value of that variable, I can just call the variable. Now this isn't really doing anything, but just having the variable there will let you see the value of that variable when you're logged in. So I can make a comment here and say, view the value of the SPN when logged in. If you wanted to actually use this, you can use it just like any variable. We could say if EBS brake switch is not equal to zero, then you know do something here. So it's usable just like any global variable. Now if I want to transmit a message, I'll have to create another ECU and set it to be a local device. So I'll go to my J1939 manager and add another J1939 ECU. And you'll see that it named it J1939 ECU underscore one and that it will increment that number every time you create another ECU so that they all have unique names. So if I open this, I can check local device here. And when I do that, you'll see this new tab appears, P2P RX signals. This is going to be a device that is created inside the controller and I'm gonna be using it to transmit data out of the controller. So that means that uh, from this perspective, TX is now what is going to be transmitted out of the controller. When we were here at this remote device, TX was from the perspective of that device, meaning that device was transmitting this coming into the controller. Now that I'm on a uh, local device, TX means I will be transmitting this out of the controller. So to start with, I'm gonna set up a unique uh, source address for this guy and I'm going to give it source address two. And then I'm going to go to TX signals and add a PG. And I'm going to use uh, TSC1 as the PG and I'm gonna transmit. So there are all of the SPNs inside TSC1. And let's go to uh, the IO mapping tab and we can see the the variables here. So again, these are the, vari the global variables that are defined for all the SPNs, and the arrow is now pointing out of the box, meaning that these are outputs from the controller. So what I'll do is I'll just choose an SPN to work with here, and I will choose engine override control mode. So I will copy that, and I'll go to handle J1939, and I will paste this in here and now I can just give it any value that I want. So I'll assign it a value of uh, one. I'll add a comment here so that we know what this is. Okay, so now we have a local SPN configured to be transmitted out of the controller. Lastly, if I wanted to create a local device but receive data on it, uh, I can create one more ECU and open that up, set it to be local device, but now I'm going to receive a PGN on this device. So I'll add a PG, I'll choose the same TSC1. Now let's go back to the general tab and review the preferred address. Now that this is a ECU where I'm going to be receiving signals, this preferred address becomes the destination address. So I am going to leave this zero for now and where I wanna configure the source address that I'm going to be receiving this from is in this RX signals tab. So I'll highlight the PGN that I'm dealing with and come over here to source address. I can change this to three, and now this PGN that I'm receiving here will be uh, coming in from source address three. So just keep that in mind. 
that when you are transmitting PGNs on a local device, the preferred address is the source address. When you're receiving PGNs on a local device, the preferred address is the destination address, and the source address is tied to the actual PGN in the RX signals tab. So now that I have this device that can receive messages, I'm going to go change the code I originally set up for the engine override control mode from J1939 ECU1. What I want to do is I want to have the same variable from J1939 ECU2 control the value of the engine override control mode. So I'll go to engine or er, uh, J1939 ECU2 and grab its engine override control mode. Notice there is a underscore one at the end to give it a unique name. And I will go back and replace the value of one with that variable. So now this kind of acts like a gateway between J1939 ECU1 and J1939 ECU2. This value comes from ECU2 and it's writing to this value from J1939 ECU1. This will all make a little more sense once we're logged into Codasys and we can see how the controller is actually processing the data. At this point, I've created the hex file for the application by going to online, create boot application and hex file. I flashed it to the controller with our WinFlash program, and if you're not familiar with that process, we have a video that you can watch before you continue with the rest of this video. Lastly, I'll need to make sure that everything in the project is set up correctly for login. Double click the device entry in the project tree and go to the configuration tab. Make sure that you've set it for X CAN bus 1 or whichever CAN bus you're going to be logging in on and make sure it's been flashed to the controller with that setting. Also, double check your CAN bus baud rate. For this one, I'm gonna use 250. Now let's go to the communication settings and I'm going to scan the network. It's found my controller and I'm going to click OK to set that as my active device. Now I'm going to log in and I'm gonna go back to handle J1939. Right now, you can see the value coming in for the break switch on J1939 ECU is zero, as well as the engine override control modes for ECUs one and two. I'm gonna send a CAN message to modify the value of EBS break switch with our PCAN view program. Here you can see that I've set up some messages. Since EBS break switch was on J1939 ECU, which use source address 01, I've configured this message here with the correct PGN to send the data on. So I know that a value of 40 and byte 0 will alter the break switch. So if I double click this to send the message, you can see that the count went from 0 to 1, so it sent one message, and the EBS break switch went from 0 to 1. I can now send the same message but with a different value. Instead of 40 I'm sending 0 and it'll reset that value to 0. Similarly, I have a message prepared for J1939 ECU2 which was source address 3. Since this is the PGN TSC1, its PGN is 0 so that's why I have four zeros here and then the source address of 03. So that will be modifying the engine override control mode underscore one variable. I have a value prepared here, zero two. So when I send that, you can see that it's written that to this variable, but it's also copied it to the J1939 ECU one engine override control mode. I can reset those by sending this message here with a zero value and they go back to zero. Notice that this message also appears whenever I send a message on source address three. So here I'll do it again, send a value of two, and you can see this incremented from account two to account three, and it'll increment again once I send this message. And it mimics the data that I'm sending because it's acting like a gateway here. So to recap, I created J1939 ECU 
which will act like the placeholder for an external J1939 device. I use the EBS brake switch SPN and handle J1939 so that I could just see the data coming in. I was simulating that device, the data coming from that device, by using our PCAN view program. Then I created J1939 ECU1 and I made that a local device and I wanted to transmit from that device. So I went to the IO mapping and I used the variable engine override control mode. So in handle J1939, I set this up as the output in this expression. J1939 ECU2 is also a local device set up to receive signals. So again, I used engine override control mode here with the underscore one to, to designate it as a unique variable for this ECU. So we can see that is the input in this expression. So when I send a CAN message here, it's going to get the data here in this variable, and it's going to be copied to this variable because of the construction of this expression. The J1939 manager will handle all of the background processing, and you can see that the data that was sent down here gets repeated up here. So again, if I send a value of 2, it's sending out that CAM message from source address 2, which is J1939 ECU1. I hope this video has helped you. Feel free to view our other videos on our products, and thank you for watching.